Next, NASA says its Voyager 1 probe, the most distant human-made object in the universe, is sending usable information to Earth again. We will get to all of that. First, though, NASA is back in communication with a spacecraft that's unimaginably far away. Launched more than 46 years ago, Voyager 1 is now beyond the dwarf planet Pluto and outside of our solar system more than 15 billion miles away. 36 years ago has made it beyond the solar system the first human-made object to do so. Watch 2's Dan Billow tells us what Voyager carries to communicate with other civilizations. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft is back in business after engineers addressed a computer problem from 15 billion miles away. Back in November, the probe started sending back corrupted data. After months of troubleshooting, scientists tracked the problem to a specific computer chip. Before both Voyager spacecraft crossed into interstellar space, long before their signal grew faint and their instruments were shut down one by one, they sent us a gift. A series of photographs, the last images they would ever capture. After visiting the giant planets, after transforming our understanding of the solar system forever, Voyager 1 turned its camera back toward home, a maneuver no spacecraft had ever attempted before. And through a sequence of 60 images, it recorded a portrait of our solar system. These became the Voyager mission's final images. But although this portrait is extraordinary, it doesn't give us the full story. Certain points of light in that mosaic mark a world Voyager 1 or 2 once saw up close, during a fleeting moment in time. So in this video, we're going to look at every final image in the family portrait, and then travel back through Voyager's journey, revealing the original photograph stitched and stabilized into stunning flyby footage. Most of you have probably never seen this sequence of images before, and honestly, they are absolutely stunning. And if you enjoy this video, then please tap the like button and leave a comment. It really does help more than you know. The family portrait explained. On February 14, 1990, Voyager 1 was almost 6 billion kilometers, 3.7 billion miles from home, a distance so great that the sun simply glimmers like a bright star in the night sky. The spacecraft was never designed to look back. Its cameras were built for close-up views of giant planets not for photographing tiny distant points of light lost in solar glare. But as Voyager drifted farther away, the famous astronomer Carl Sagan proposed a bold idea to NASA. Could we capture a portrait of the solar system from the outside looking in? It's one of those ideas that sounds simple until you try to do it. No one knew if it was even possible. You see, at this distance the planets are spread across a vast arc of sky and are incredibly dim or hidden by the sun's bright glare. But this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and so it had to be attempted. After both cameras were turned on and heated up for three hours, Voyager 1 took 60 separate images, slowly rotating its narrow-angle and wide-angle cameras to capture the position of every visible planet at the time. And what it saw was magnificent. Venus, a soft, pale crescent. Earth, barely a blue pixel, illuminated by a thin ray of scattered sunlight. Jupiter and Saturn, the brightest beacons in the portrait, Uranus and Neptune, ghostly smudges, almost lost at the very edge of visibility, and at the center of it all, our mighty Sun. Not the blazing disk we see from Earth, but more like a shimmering star. When the mosaic was complete, the photos were stitched together into one of the most iconic images ever taken. The Solar System Family Portrait, a picture of our neighborhood, taken from farther than any human eye had ever imagined. But to truly understand this portrait, we need to go back, to see these worlds the way Voyager once saw them. So I downloaded hundreds of gigabytes of Voyager's raw data. I stitched the frames into time lapses, stabilized them, and rebuilt the exact moments Voyager passed each world. And the result, even after all these years, genuinely surprised me. And once you've seen them, the family portrait, the final images ever taken by Voyager 1 suddenly become even more meaningful. Neptune, the last planet visited. In the family portrait, Neptune appears as a tiny, barely visible blue smudge, a world so distant that sunlight takes four hours to reach it. This is the only image Voyager 1 ever captured of Neptune, but Voyager 2, its twin spacecraft, did fly past it. On August 25th, 1989, Voyager 2 swept just 4,850 kilometers, 3,000 miles above Neptune's cloud tops. 
It saw a world driven by towering storms, swirling dark spots, and the fastest winds ever recorded, reaching up to 2,400 kilometers per hour, 1,500 miles per hour. Most people have only ever really seen this famous image of Neptune. But what Voyager actually recorded, the raw photographs reveal so much more than the processed images ever could. Here's the original view, stabilized and sped up. That fleeting pass was the last time any spacecraft saw Neptune up close. And in Voyager 1's family portrait, frozen as a single faint smudge, you're looking at a distant echo of that encounter. But this wasn't the only ice giant planet Voyager revealed to us. Uranus, a world frozen in time. Like Neptune, in the family portrait, Uranus appears as a faint, pale blue smudge. And just like Neptune, Voyager 1 never visited it. This is the only image it ever captured of Uranus. Once again, it was Voyager 2 that made the long journey. The first and only spacecraft to ever fly past this bizarre world. On January 24, 1986, Voyager 2 swept within 81,800 kilometers, 50,600, of Uranus's cloud tops. At first glance, it looked featureless. But these images don't tell us the full story. Uranus isn't bland at all. Its atmosphere was simply in a subdued phase. At the time, Uranus was near its southern summer solstice. The South Pole aimed almost straight at the Sun. With its extreme 98-degree tilt, one hemisphere can stay lit for decades, while the other sits in complete darkness. Like living through a 40-year daytime, or a 40-year night. But in the years since Voyager's flyby, telescopes have revealed a far more active Uranus, with storms and bright cloud features emerging as the seasons change, confirming it was never a bland planet at all, it was just bad timing. This is Voyager 2's original view, stabilized and sped up. Behind that single pixel is a frozen, tilted world, one we've still barely explored. But as Voyager 1's camera continued its sweep inward, it approached a world that would become possibly the most iconic planet ever photographed. Diatom watches. Watches. You know, while I've been working on this video, I've had something on my desk that reminds me why I love space exploration so much. It's a watch made by Diatom, a team here in the UK who wanted to create watches that aren't just accessories, but objects that literally carry moments from the story of the solar system. Let me show you. Every Diatom watch contains an actual fragment of meteorite, a real piece of metal forged billions of years ago at the very beginning of the solar system. The dial on the Diatom grey dot shows this perfectly, revealing the widman stetton pattern, a pattern that can only form inside the slow cooling heart of an asteroid. Then there's the detail I still can't quite believe I own. Each watch, like my blue dot here, contains a piece of Captain Foil, literally the material that helped Neil Armstrong and the Apollo 11 crew survive humanity's first moon landing. This went to the moon and back, and to tie it all together, Diatom do something pretty incredible. Every watch is sent above the atmosphere into near space before being packed up for delivery. But beyond all the storytelling, they're also genuinely well-built watches. I own the stunning grey dot and blue dot, but there are others. The blue dot MK2 meteor dial is one I'm hoping to add to my collection soon. So head over to the Diatom website and make sure you use my link, because as a V101 viewer, you get an exclusive 10% off any Diatom watch. Saturn, the turning point. In the family portrait, Saturn stands out more than any other. It appears as a bright white dot, the brightest pixel in the entire mosaic. And unlike Uranus and Neptune, both Voyager spacecraft visited Saturn. Voyager 1 arrived first in November 1980, followed by Voyager 2 in August 1981, each revealing different views of the ringed world. For Voyager 1, Saturn was literally a turning point. NASA had to choose, send it onward to Pluto, or divert it toward Titan, the mysterious moon wrapped in thick orange haze. Titan 1. By diving so close, Titan's gravity flung Voyager 1 upward and out of the plane of the solar system, ending its chance of ever reaching Pluto, but giving us the first close look at one of the most weirdly Earth-like moons out there. Voyager 2 stayed on course, and continued the grand tour to Uranus and Neptune, as we have already seen. But both spacecraft captured thousands of images of Saturn and its magnificent rings shimmering in sunlight. The Voyager 2 images, however, I personally think are the most stunning, 
when placed into a time-lapse sequence, stabilized and sped up. After Saturn, Voyager 1's cameras continued inward toward the region of Mars, but in the family portrait, Mars doesn't appear at all. The missing worlds, with it's one of two missing major planets, along with Mercury. According to NASA, scattered sunlight in the optics washed out Mars completely. The faint red planet was simply drowned in solar glare. Mercury suffered a similar fate, too close to the sun to be clearly imaged. The sun, seen from the edge. But Voyager 1 did capture the sun, a single frame, still the only photograph ever taken of our star from beyond the orbit of the major planets. From nearly 6 billion kilometers, 3.7 billion miles away, it doesn't look like a blazing furnace as we see it, but a bright spiky star caused by the diffraction of light inside the camera. From here, the mosaic sweeps away from the sun to the next giant in the portrait, Jupiter. Jupiter, a world in motion. Like Saturn, Jupiter appears as a small white dot, but still one of the brightest points in the entire mosaic. And like Saturn, both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 visited Jupiter up close. When they arrived in 1979, the images they returned genuinely shocked scientists. While the Pioneer 10 and 11 missions, the previous spacecraft to visit Jupiter, had provided initial glimpses, the Voyager's more advanced cameras revealed an entirely new, dynamic, and unexpected level of complexity. Swirling cloud bands, the Great Red Spot, lightning storm, and even volcanic plumes blasting hundreds of kilometers into space from the moon, Io. Even now, these raw photos look unbelievable, but the Voyager 1 flyby images, however, I personally think are the most stunning when placed into a time-lapse sequence, stabilized and sped up. After photographing Jupiter, Voyager's camera turned toward the most delicate and meaningful point in the entire mosaic, Earth. Earth, the pale blue dot. Neither Voyager 1 nor Voyager 2 ever performed a flyby of our planet. Both left Earth on direct outbound trajectories after launch in 1977, never to return. But before Voyager 1 slipped away for good, it captured a brief distant image of Earth from 11.6 million kilometers away, 7.25 million miles. The first photograph ever taken by a spacecraft to show both the Earth and the Moon in a single frame. It marked the beginning of Voyager's journey outward and the last time it ever saw home up close. 13 years later, Voyager looked back again, and this time, Earth wasn't a crescent or a sphere. In the family portrait, it appears as a single pale blue pixel, suspended inside a narrow beam of sunlight created by scattering within the camera optics. That faint point became one of the most famous photographs ever taken, not because of its detail, but because of what it represents. Every person who has ever lived, every story, every civilization, Every moment in human history, all contained within a single pixel. Carl Sagan said it best. That's home. That's us. And he was right. It's impossible to see that pixel and not feel something. Or humility, maybe even a little sadness. Venus, the final planet. And finally, inward from Earth in the family portrait, lies the last planet Voyager 1 ever captured, Venus. Neither Voyager 1 nor Voyager 2 ever visited it since both spacecraft focused on the outer solar system. From nearly 6 billion kilometers away, Venus appears as a soft, pale crescent, a tiny shard of reflected sunlight scattered by its thick global cloud layer. Voyager's last look back, well, this single frame marks the final planet in the family portrait, the last piece of the solar system Voyager 1 would ever see. Shortly afterwards, its cameras were shut down forever completing the only portrait of our solar system ever taken from the outside looking in. Why were the cameras shut down? The reason was to save power for the instruments needed to study interstellar space, a decision that meant Voyager would never take another photograph again. Every image you've seen in this video, every dot, every pixel, represents the last moments Voyager's cameras were ever active. Today, both Voyagers continue their journey outward, far beyond the planets, drifting through the quiet darkness between the stars. This final look back remains their last message in light. A small, fragile snapshot of home, captured by the farthest explorers we've ever set free.